Hello, everyone. My name is Brooke Brigham, and I am a career engagement partner with SNHU Career Services. Today, we have our featured guest, Keith Waddell, who's the director of Security Americas with Jacobs, joining us. Uh, and so I'll let Keith give a little bit of a background on the company. And today we'll be just discussing industrial security profession, the industry itself, how to get most effectively started on this path, uh, and then I also would like to introduce Peter Bartell, who is an employer relations partner with SNHU. Uh, so thank you both so much for joining me today. Uh, Keith, I will, if you can, if you could just give a brief introduction of yourself, your background, and anything else you'd like to share about the company, that would be wonderful. Wonderful, th you know, th thank you. Thank you, Brooke, I really appreciate uh, uh, the introduction and, and being here today. Uh, my name is Keith Waddell. I am the uh, director of the Americas uh, in this security field for Jacobs. Uh, we're based in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we are 55,000 employees and about 15 billion in revenue. We uh, work, uh, we have a large segment of our business, about 40% within the aerospace and defense community. We have another large segment that does large infrastructure projects, whether they be dams, power plants, uh, you name it, we, if, if it's complicated, we do it. I've uh, been with the company, I've started, uh, started, uh, finished my sixth year, started my seventh year, been uh, in the security industry my entire career, uh, straight out of college. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree uh, from Louisiana State University system, go Tigers. And then uh, also have a master's degree in security administration from Central Michigan University. This is my chosen career field it is not something where I worked in another area and then retired into it. I know there are some people that do, but uh, I am um, I'm a lifer uh, in this field. Awesome. Thanks so much for the intro, Keith. Good, good to have it. Um, so we'll start with the first question. Tell us about the industrial security industry. Uh, the ind industrial security industry is really a cottage, almost a boutique type industry that a lot of people really don't know about. Okay, It primarily serves, uh, to sum it up in a quick nutshell, it really services the classified world, i.e. classified documents, classified programs. Uh, it is strictly a government-based uh, program. Uh, it originally got started, you know, back in the uh, back in the 50s, uh, when uh, we're coming out of the, you know, coming out of the actually coming out of the last war, getting into the Cold War. We really had to have processes in place to be able to secure classified information. And uh, uh, what has been published and what we live by is the Industrial Security Manual. And you can Google that Industrial Security Manual and uh, read it. Uh, it is not for the faint of heart. It is several inches thick, but it completely gives you guidance for your industrial security program, specifically around what does a facility have to do to be cleared? What are the safeguards have to be in place? What is involved with personal clearances, i.e. a security clearance for a person? It also goes into the document protection uh, and information protection. How do you protect documents, classified documents. There is a very structured, very rigid environment uh, for that. Uh, it also has to do with who has access to that information. And can you track and verify who all has information to that? Same thing holds true for information systems also. Uh, very, very uh, involved framework for protecting classified information while it's processing. Uh, and it's really important because, you know, if if you're not using the classified information, it becomes useless. So it needs to be used, but also needs to be protected. And there are very strict guidelines to how you share that information, who you can share it with, okay? And also the need to be able to track who has all of that information and who you have given access to and why your customer has, has given it to you. So just because you have a security clearance in one area does not mean you're gonna get access. At the end of the day, it's really based on need to know and need to share, all right? Yeah. You might think you have a need to know, but your client or your customer may not think you do. So it really takes the, the combination of both of those to be able to 
really work within that framework. It's very rigid. It's very structured. Hmm. Uh, I say it's a boutique or cottage industry. And the reason being, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of employers uh, in the United States, but there's only about 13,000 clear defense contractors in the United States. So it's a very, very small uh, boutique industry. However, uh, it is a very important industry because it truly protects all the classified information, whether it comes out of the Pentagon or any of the other any of the other signatory agencies that have signed on to uh, what's called the National Industrial Security Program. Huh. It's definitely important to have those steps and process in place. So understand. Um, it, is, it, it is it is mission critical because yeah. our ad, because our adversaries want that information. It's yeah. what gives us it, it's what gives us a military advantage on the battlefield and ultimately protects that warfighter, whether it be a sailor, soldier, airman, mm-hmm. or marine. And mm-hmm. you know, it could be your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, your cousin. Uh, and what you are protecting is their safety in the battle space. And that's yep. why it's extremely important. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, second question, what advice would you share with learners looking to be a part of this field? Uh, several, several things. First of all, go inquire about it. Go reach out to, you know, trusted partners, friends that may be working in that space. Go sit down with them, have a conversation with them, you know, yep. ask for them to be a, a, a mentor for you. Tell them, and you may end up having to take you know, an entry level position in that field. All right. People are like, oh, geez, entry level position. Those entry level positions pay well. Industrial mm-hmm. security profession pays really good. It's 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 not like, you know, when most people think of security, they think of a security guard. This is not that at all. Even though that is a segment of it, yeah. it is not the entire, it is not the entire uh, industry. Go learn from someone. Uh, the other thing, I, the other thing uh, that I would suggest uh, in this day and age, um, be a good citizen, all right? Don't get arrested. Don't do drugs. Don't do any of that uh, because those types of things can reflect negatively yep. on you yep. when you go for security clearance because when you go in this field and you want to get a security clearance, one of the things they're looking at is your character, right. is your background. Are you trustworthy? Is is this person good enough to be able to entrust the nation's secrets with? Good. So yeah, be a be a good citizen, be a good employee, have great character. Awesome. Good good advice and process again, right, in a different form, but but good advice nonetheless. Um, different pieces to have in place. Um, last question, Keith. What is the most valuable experience or a skill uh, a learner could have on their resume for this field? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it two different ways. Uh, one is soft skills and the other one's hard skills. Um, hard skills, uh, investigation, attention to detail is critical in this. Details mm-hmm. matter. Okay. You know, and you know, leaders, you know, sometimes people get bored with the details. That's not what a leader does. A leader is doubly important. Uh, it's doubly important for leaders to be able to, you know, get into the details because at the end of the day, details matter. One thing I would one thing I would suggest on that is read Colin Powell's, you know, traits of leadership. You can Google them and you can find them. Really, really good information. And the other soft skill I would recommend, listen. Intently listen. Okay. Because you might think you have the answer to it, but I got I promise you, and there have been many times in my career it's like, yeah, I got this, I got this. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh, hang on a second. They're saying something a little bit different. Maybe I don't yeah. have this. Yeah. So it's really important to be intentional with your listening yes. right? and, and, and listen to others. Find good leaders, find good mentors, emulate what they do, sit down with them and tell them, you know, I want to sit down with you. I want 15 minutes of your time. I want to talk to you about this field and I want to learn more. Awesome. And one of my favorite quotes is, um, listen to understand don't listen to respond right which is kind of what you're saying with making sure that you understand the whole process so i i can appreciate that part for sure yeah absolutely you know, you know colin powell's traits of leadership uh, the one that i really really like a lot is perpetual optimism is a force multiplier awesome
All right. And one of the things he said, and, and part of that is, you know, no matter how bad you think it is today, tomorrow it's going to be a little bit better. Be the optimist. You know, don't don't be overly optimistic, but be optimistic about what the options are. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Keith, for joining us today. Uh, Keith Waddell with, with Jacobs, and we appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Enjoy Thanks, it. Thanks, Keith. You bet. Y'all have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye.